Hello and welcome everyone, this is Mr. Umath again and today is our first approach to the zeros of the zeta function. Actually, I must admit, these are only the trivial zeros, so we will not start to work with a more complicated zeros on the critical line, but we will start off working with the trivial zeros. These are pretty easy to calculate, actually these are all the values of zeta minus 2k equals 0, while important you have to notice that k is equal or is is a positive number, so um, zeta of minus 2, zeta of minus 4, zeta of minus 6 and so forth, all the negative odd values um, will give you a trivial zero. They're, they are called trivial because they they don't have to have a important meaning in uh, the distribution of the prime numbers. So these are just trivial and not important for the Riemann hypothesis. Now, let's have a look. How can we derive these guys? It's, it's a pretty simple proof, so don't be too scared <laughs> if this video is over very, very fast. So uh, let's start off with the Riemann functional equation. So this is uh, our starting point, and actually you should smell it why I'm using it. But if not, so just repeat it. What is the zeta function can be written as 2 to the s pi s minus 1 sine pi s over 2 gamma of 1 minus s zeta of 1 minus s. So nothing very magical happening here. But now let's plug in s equals minus 2k. So it's a pretty simple step. So we plug in minus 2k. And now you might get a little bit confused, OK? So let's look what happens in here. First of all, we get a minus sign. Why does this appear in here? It happens that if you plug in sine uh, pi minus 2k over 2, so you have pi k because the 2k, the 2 in the 2k will cancel, and the minus sign can be written outside of the sine function because the sine is not. Um, even function, it's an odd function, so you can take out the minus sign and write it in front. So first uh, magic here, I hope it's demystified. Now let's go to the second part, it's 2 to the minus 2k, so nothing special happening here. We have also here a pi minus 2k minus 1, which is also not very magical, but this guy, where did this guy, guy come from? Uh, 2k factorial. Now remember, if we have some factorial and you have a gamma function, there should be a relationship. And if you just plug this in, 1 minus minus 2k will give you 1 plus 2k, but we know that gamma of 1 plus 2k is nothing else but the factorial of 2k. Okay. Now we head forward and see that we have this sine pi k, I explained this, the min minus sign went in front of, and the 2 and the 2k just were um, eliminated and then we have this guy which is zeta of 1 plus 2k but we know that zeta of 1 plus 2k is is finite, we know that sinus, sine pi k is finite, we know that this guy is finite, actually we know all these guys are finite, this is important, why, why is this important? Because we know that this guy, sine of pi k, uh, if, if you try to imagine that what is happening here, uh, the first case is that you plug in k equals 1, which is on the unit circle, uh, going half around the circle, which will give you a value of zero, and every other uh, k two uh, k equals two will give you two pi. So this guy is always zero, but this is not enough for saying that this guy is zero. So you have to s know that these guys are all finite, and they actually are. It's pretty simple to see. This guy is also finite. So where we land is that zeta of minus two k is equal to zero. Okay, now there is a little bit of confusion about this uh, kind of expression because if uh, we know that zeta of minus 2 is equal to 0, many people say, how can that be? How can zeta of minus 2 be equal to 0? Because they write down the zeta function in its um, 
power sum, not power sum, but it is in its original way writing 1 plus 1 over 2 to the s and so forth. Now, if you plug it in this, it in there like this, you are not actually allowed to plug in minus uh, 2. Why are you not allowed? Because the real value of your s has to be, of your complex variable s, has to be greater than 1. Actually, this kind of representation, which we found for the zeta function, is even more powerful than the first that we found, because this allows us to plug in negative values, and this is a very powerful kind of property and many people stand there and say okay what's happening here how can such a divergence sum become zero and even more <laughs> such an even more powerful uh, diverging sum will become zero actually this stems from the idea that a function can have different representations and you you could write down a function which is representing representing your actually you have a function and you are writing down a representation this is the representation which holds on a very large scale of values while the old kind of definition of the zeta function uh, just holds true for a very very uh, limited amount of values actually not limited but uh, you know only for complex values with real part of greater than one so this is what you should take from this video the trivial zeros are lying on the negative real axis for minus two minus four and so forth and what you should uh, take with you maybe I will do a video on that because it's a little bit confusing for many people that uh, this doesn't hold actually. Sometimes people just write it down uh, as it is true but actually it's not a true statement because this right hand side uh, representation doesn't hold for negative values of s. Okay, negative values um, meaning the real part s smaller than one. So this is what you should uh, have learned from this. I hope you had fun and uh, I hope you can feel that we are closer, uh, we are approaching closer and closer to the Riemann hypothesis. Maybe if I have some time I will actually uh, do some videos on calculating the zeros of the zeta function and um, Actually, uh, I, I'm not planning to really prove this on YouTube, uh, the Riemann hypothesis. If I knew, I, I, I would maybe do it, <laughs> just out of fun. But uh, I actually don't know it, and so um, the next uh, few videos uh, will be about the Riemann Xi function, which will um, make clear where this stems from, or better, the Riemann hypothesis. Uh, stems from and I hope to make a video on the zeros of the zeta function if I have time okay so like always if you have still some questions about this video something was unclear or something like this please feel free to comment if you just w want to give feedback please feel free to give feedback and um, if you like my video please give thumbs up and I thank you guys like always and I hope to see you soon in my upcoming videos okay see you guys